using Blender to create basic landscape environments and skyboxes for the Florida Wildlife Corridor curriculum. Having learned how to bring objects into Spatial and how to create custom environments and skyboxes for Spatial within Spatial using off-the-shelf Sketchfab assets, it is time to explore how to create our own and bring them in from our computer. Downloading Blender 3D. Step one is to use Blender 3D, the free open source software available to everyone everywhere. Step one, of course, is to download the latest version of Blender, downloading the Blender GIS add-on. Next, for the purposes of the wildlife corridor, download the Blender GIS add-on. Do not unzip it, simply click on the green code button on the top right and then click on download zip. Open Blender, go to edit, preferences, install, and choose the zip file for the Blender GIS you downloaded. Toggle the Blender GIS add-on by checking the box to the left of the name in preferences getting the Open Topography API key for Satellite Maps and Digital Elevation Models, or SRTM. There's only one more slightly tricky step to this process. You need to get an API key from the Open Topography website to be able to get the texture maps, satellite maps, of the area of interest to you. An Application Programming Interface, or API key, is a code used to identify and authenticate an application or user. You must go then to HTTP colon slash slash open topography.org and get a free account and then click on request an API key. Then you'll need to log in. Then you simply copy the provided API key into the appropriate field in the Blender add-on, like so. Also make sure you've selected a cache folder for the base maps or you may get an error message, like so. This is simply done by clicking on the folder icon to the right and picking any place in your hard drive where you want the base maps located. Now you should be all set up and you will see in Blender a new menu on the right of the top left that says GIS. Let's download and create a GIS landscape map of the Withalakuchi Gulf Preserve using Blender GIS for the first time with the Likuchi Preserve. From the Blender GIS base map option, choose satellite. The first thing you'll see is a distant projection of the world map. Now hit G for go to and put in the Withalakuchi Gulf Preserve. I set my zoom to about 15. The result when we hit OK is this. Using my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out to get the part of the landscape I want to capture. For my purposes, I'll focus on the part where the river meets the roads. This should be just small and yet big enough to let my character move around the river from the tip of the island. So now I hit the E key to capture the extent of the satellite view. Hitting E cuts out that portion that we see on the screen and makes a mesh file out of it. Bringing in elevation, DEM, SRTM contours. The next thing I wanna do is get the elevation, the DEM or digital elevation topographical information by clicking on GIS again and selecting the Web Geodata Get Elevation SRTM menu item. SRTM stands for Shuttle Radar Topography Mission and is elevation data for the regions of the Earth supplied by the Space Shuttle. Here's where that API key you downloaded comes into play. The SRTM DEM comes in as a grayscale topography and Blender throws you into the solid mode of the viewport shader, which only reveals grayscale. To get back to the color satellite map, make sure you toggle the materials mode in the viewport shader. Now, when you push the image with your mouse by holding down the scroll wheel button, you will see the contours are applied to the heretofore flat satellite image. Florida doesn't have much topography, no mountains, so don't expect to see a lot, but it is there. Bringing in Blender GIS OpenStreetMap data. Now to complete the process of bringing in Blender GIS data, we can try to see what using the Blender OpenStreetMap information does to the object. Use the 7 key to go back to a top view and choose OSM. Let's see what happens if we select buildings, highways, and waterways, and if we choose get elevation from object using the satellite map we brought in, use buildings extrusion, and set the default height to about 10. 
Well, this region of Florida doesn't seem to have building information in the data set, but it does have the roads and the waterways. We won't need them in spatial since we have the environmental satellite image, but it's nice to know they exist. If we'd been able to bring in buildings, that would have been cool. No matter. Exporting your landscape environment for use in spatial. Let's use File Export to export only the Google Satellite Map object. Click on it in the hierarchy on the top right and make sure only it is selected in orange. And then select .gltf or .glb as the file format. This is something both Sketchfab and Spatial accept. You need to make sure you open up Include on the right as you save and toggle selected objects only. That way you won't accidentally get cameras and cubes and lights and features you don't want into your landscape environment model. Importing your Blender GIS map and environment into Spatial. Alrighty, now let's set that GLB file as our environment in a custom spatial world. As we saw in the first two Spatial for the FWC curriculum tutorials, you choose a blank custom world template and then you click on the plus button at the top right to get to the Add Object menu. But this time you use the Upload button, which lets you bring in the GLB file you created using Blender GIS from your computer. Now you see your landscape as an object in Spatial. Select it as we showed in the last tutorial, click on it so that a blue bounding box surrounds it and the menu of editing options appears, and select the Custom Environment button. Voila, you will find yourself standing on the landscape that you brought in. It should be automatically sized to the appropriate GIS scale relative to your avatar size. How cool is that? Putting an appropriate skybox into your spatial world. You can see that spatial, as usual, has added its default skybox with those trees and mountains. Not what we want, not for Florida. We could use a generic cloud skybox from Sketchfab as we showed in the last tutorial. Boom, that looks a little better, right? Adding the airplane chair to get a bird's eye view. Now you can put in an airplane chair to fly over the landscape to see where you might want to start adding trees and animals and other objects. Once the airplane chair is in, we can sit in it by hovering our mouse over it until a green circle with a green arrow appears on it. Then, when we click, our avatar will sit down on it. And this is because some objects in Spatial are scripted with interaction hotspots. Now, when we click on the chair to select it, we can move it around the landscape using the X, Y, and Z sliders, or by simply grabbing the chair on screen and dragging it. The Y axis moves you up and down so you can get a bird's eye view. Getting a spatially geographically accurate skybox photosphere for your environment using Google Maps. But what if we want to put in a skybox of the actual sky over that part of Florida, including a bit of the surrounding tree line? To do that, we go to Google Maps and find the same geographical place. I'll type in with the Lacucci Gulf Preserve and zoom in to that part where the river meets the land. Click on the little orange-yellow person icon at the bottom right of the screen to get the street view and photosphere options. The only problem you may find with wilderness areas is that there is no photosphere of the uninhabited areas. For this one, the best we can do is to take a 360 picture from the highway. Using Street View Download 360 to get the photosphere. To make a photosphere from this image, you will need the free program Street View Download 360, which you can get from HTTPS colon slash slash svd360.istreetview.com. Install it and run it. Then you simply copy the URL from the Google Street Map image and paste it in the single panorama field and pick a folder to save to and give the image a name with the JPEG extension and hit download and you have it. Now all you have to do is go into your Blender file and create a UV sphere. Add Mesh UV Sphere. Creating a UV Sphere based photosphere in Blender. Because your landscape is so large and a Blender Sphere usually comes in at less than a meter in diameter, you won't see anything except an orange dot where it comes in at the origin of XYZ equals zero. You need to hit S on your keyboard to activate scale and then use your mouse to drag it to the right size, the size of your landscape. Now you need to texture this sphere with the photosphere you downloaded using Street View Download 360. 
To do that, click on the Materials button, a little red circle that looks a bit like the globe on the bottom right of the screen, and click on New to make a new material for the sphere. From the menu that pops up, click on the little yellow dot to the right of the world's base color and to the left of the color swatch. This opens up a window from which we choose Image Texture, texturing the photosphere with a 360 image. With the image texture chosen, you will see that your UV sphere is now black. To replace the black with your photosphere image, you simply click on the folder where it says Open and pick the JPEG you downloaded. Now the sphere is textured with a 360 wraparound image. With only the sphere selected, go again to File, Export, GLTF, GLB, and make sure you toggle Include Selected Objects so that you only get the sphere and not the landscape that you previously exported to be your spatial environment. Uploading your 360 photo sphere to Spatial. You can now upload to Spatial just like you did the landscape. Now you have a more authentic skybox from a 360 photograph taken at or near the area of interest for your environment. Adding the airplane chair again to do a flyover. You can add an airplane chair into the scene again and check out what it looks like from the air and tour around to see where you want to place trees and animals and pictures and buildings and assets. And one thing you'll probably notice instantly though is that the skybox with the Florida trees and highway doesn't really match your landscape all that well. I mean, it's cool to have a wraparound screen of an actual place in 360 degrees, but walking around it and getting it to scale is awkward. I actually prefer to simply use a true sky and cloud skybox. Adding photogrammetric models to spatial from Sketchfab and from your hard drive. When you're working with large landscapes, you'll notice that the skybox from the area really doesn't do a great job of representing the place, and as I said, a generic blue sky and cloud skybox will work much better. But then again, when you bring in a photogrammetric scan of an object, for example, a photogrammetric scan of a Florida river house that's available on Sketchfab and drop it in the scene by the river, the skybox with the trees actually does look kind of good. So there's a lot of variables to be considered in each project. Let me here bring in this river beach house, this Florida house. I typed in the word Florida house. And yeah, there it goes. Now I can add the swamp buggy from my hard drive that I scanned with my phone using Polycam at the Disney Wilderness Preserve when we were there with the Girl Scouts and the Nature Conservancy. Little by little, the landscape comes to life. We found that it is actually prudent to start with much smaller landscapes that are appropriate to a given Skybox 360 photosphere and then link them together by dropping portals to take you from world to world. You don't need to make a spatial world very big. They are spatial geographic meetup spaces for you and your friends and colleagues to get together and discuss certain things in situ. They aren't the place to go for a day hike. So here you've learned how to use Blender GIS to pick and export a landscape and bring it into spatial and how to use Google Maps Street View and Street View Download 360 in Blender to create a skybox photosphere to use in spatial with your landscape and how to bring other objects into your world, whether you created them yourself or grabbed them from Sketchfab. This is all fine and good, and it's a great start. Using Unity 3D to solve the collision problem and other challenges. One of the big problems of this workflow method is that objects that you bring into spatial have no collision set, so you end up walking through them as if you were a ghost. To solve this problem, you have to actually build your spatial world in a proper game engine and give each object the proper mesh collision properties. The game engine Spatial is designed to work with is called Unity 3D. You will no doubt find, as I have, that landscapes and skyboxes and static objects in the landscape, like houses, big trees, rocks, permanent objects, and even animated objects that persist like cars and trucks, are best put into your world using Unity 3D first to build your worlds that are then uploaded automatically from Unity into Spatial so that you have fine control over every element. And it is to this ultimate task that we turn our attention next. Mm -hmm.